If you want to build muscle, you already know that the three main areas to focus on are eating, training, and sleeping. When you optimize these three things, you build plenty of muscle. On the other hand, if you don't train hard enough, you don't eat right, or you don't get enough sleep, you're going to find it a lot harder to build any muscle. So most of your results will come down to these three factors. And the good news is that there are a couple science-based tips and hacks that you can use to optimize each of these three factors to really speed up muscle growth. And the very first undervalued hack that most people have never even tried is using bands and chains to improve resistance curves. You see, many exercises have a specific sticking point. For example, on the bench press, the sticking point tends to happen after the bar comes off the chest right before the halfway point. That's the point where the exercise is the hardest and requires the most strength. Meanwhile, other points, like the lockout portion for example, require much less strength. To give another example, during the squat, the sticking point typically occurs near the halfway point where the thigh is at about a 30 degree angle to the floor. And most exercises have these kinds of sticking points. So this is important because when you fail to complete another rep, you might be under the impression that you've maxed out and you can't do more reps because your muscles are too fatigued to further produce force. But in reality, the muscle might not be fully fatigued just yet. Instead, it might just be fatigued enough to where you can't complete a specific part of the movement, which could be referred to as your sticking point. Luckily, you can use resistance bands and chains to help with this. They allow you to change the resistance curve of an exercise, which means that chains and bands can make certain parts of the movement more or less challenging. For example, during the squat, the resistance bands and the chains provide more resistance the closer you get to lockout, which is the part of the movement that's past the sticking point. So you'll be more likely to be able to handle a heavier resistance as you get closer and closer to lockout. And that's exactly what chains and bands can provide. Not only will this lead to a more effective muscle building stimulus, but it can also help you gain strength more effectively as shown by multiple studies. For example, two studies show that bench pressing and squatting with bands or chains builds more strength than doing these exercises without bands or chains. In another 2016 paper published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, researchers found that more advanced lifters tend to benefit the most from using bands and chains. Beginners, on the other hand, many times don't have the required coordination and the rate of force development to use bands and chains effectively, which is why if you're a beginner, you're better off getting accustomed to weight training in general before adding bands and chains. And for those of you that are more advanced, keep in mind bands and chains don't necessarily improve the effectiveness of all of your exercises. For example, an exercise like the leg press, even though it has its fair share of problems, it generally already has a great resistance curve. So there's really not much of a point of adding chains or bands to a leg press. The next muscle building hack is to train either later in the afternoon or early evening. Now, if you have a solid morning routine, there's nothing wrong with that, but you should know that your body does have an internal clock known as the circadian rhythm. Due to this circadian rhythm, you're stronger, faster, and you have a more beneficial hormonal status for exercise at certain times of the day. If you take advantage of this by training at the right time, you can in fact boost your gym performance and your progress. And we have evidence of this. For example, a 2016 study compared the effectiveness of a 24-week workout program where one group completed their workouts between 6.30 and 10 in the morning, meanwhile the other group worked out between 4.30 p.m. and 8 at night. As you can see in the graph on the screen, the results showed that those who train in the evening gained much more muscle. On top of that, another study that specifically examined bodybuilders who either trained before 10 a.m. or after 6 p.m. also found that the bodybuilders that worked out in the evening gained more muscle, which is very interesting, but it makes you wonder why are evening workouts proving to be more effective for muscle growth? And it really comes down to three reasons. First is post-workout anabolic signaling, which is something that leads directly to muscle growth. It's higher later on in the day. The second thing is that you have a more favorable testosterone to cortisol ratio in the evening rather than in the morning. And the third thing is that your core body temperature peaks in the evening, which enhances muscle activation, energy metabolism, nervous system efficiency, and blood flow to your muscles. That's why it makes sense to train in the evening if your schedule allows for it. Ideally, this means working out between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m., although a more flexible guideline is to train between 2.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. 
Just keep in mind, a morning workout routine that you consistently stick to is way better than an evening routine that you don't or can't stay consistent with. Now, another tip that'll help you increase your upper body push strength is to perform the concentric portion of the bench press as explosively as possible. Remember, the concentric portion of the bench press is the part where you're pressing the weight up off of your chest. And the faster and more explosive that your press is from your chest to lock out, the more reps you're able to complete. In a study where participants were instructed to complete the concentric portion of the press either at maximum speed or a controlled half speed, researchers found that after six weeks, the maximum speed group improved their bench press strength by an average of 18.2%. Meanwhile, the slower speed group gained only 9.7%. So they were able to literally almost double their strength gains simply by performing the concentric portion of the movement with as much force as possible. This is most likely because lifting a weight with as much force as possible causes more muscle fibers to be recruited compared to just barely overcoming that weight load. Now, as far as I'm aware, there are no studies that looked at whether similar results could be expected from exercises like the deadlift and squats but it's likely that the same effects will carry over. So if you wanna improve your strength or just maximize muscle fiber recruitment during your exercises, apply a high amount of force during the concentric portion of your exercise. But please make sure to lower the weight nice and slow with a lot of control. So explode on the way up, but lower the weight slowly or else you'll be doing this really wrong and you'll end up with an injury. The next simple hack that'll go a long way is to start all your workouts by focusing on your priority muscle group or your priority exercise first. This is because the muscles and the exercises that you train first in a workout, they tend to improve the most. Meanwhile, those exercises that are trained later on get a less effective stimulus as shown by another study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. In this study, the researchers concluded that if an exercise is important for your training goals, then it should be positioned at the beginning of your training session, regardless of whether or not it's a large muscle group exercise or a small muscle group exercise. So in the case of a power lifter, this generally means starting with either a squat, bench press, or deadlift. In the case of a bodybuilder, this usually also means starting with a big compound movement like the squat, bench press, or deadlift, but it could also mean doing an isolation exercise for a specific lagging muscle group first. For example, let's say that your calves are lagging and it's a muscle group that you really wanna see develop and grow. Then contrary to what most people would advise, it's fine to start your session with calf raises first. Now, going back to what we were talking about earlier, if you don't like working out at night and you're better at getting it done in the morning, a hack that can make a big difference for you is to consume caffeine before your morning workouts. Also, you should do your best to train around the same time every morning because that'll help your circadian rhythm adapt to that time. And like I said, as opposed to people that work out late at night, you can actually have caffeine without interrupting your sleep schedule. Research shows that having caffeine can help reduce some of the downsides associated with early morning workout sessions, such as impaired central nervous system efficiency and slower muscle activation speeds. Even though this is beneficial, caffeine won't really help fix everything. For example, you won't improve your testosterone to cortisol ratio just by drinking coffee, but caffeine can definitely help give you a strength and an overall performance boost. Just keep in mind, if you take it too often, you'll develop a tolerance and become more immune to the stimulating effects of caffeine. So I recommend that you take caffeine only occasionally, like once or twice a week, whether in the form of coffee or pre-workout supplements to help boost your performance on those specific days. The next hack that can really help you in the training department is to implement staggered sets. For these types of sets, you would alter back and forth between exercises that train muscles that have opposing functions. For example, your biceps flex your elbow. Meanwhile, your triceps extend it. Those are two opposing functions. So a staggered set for the biceps and triceps would be something like performing a set of bicep curls, resting a minute, then performing a set of tricep extensions, then resting for another minute and going right back to the bicep curls. And you would do this back and forth. By setting up your workouts like this, you're able to do more training volume within a given period of time without interfering with your workout performance. Doing two tricep exercises in a row would definitely interfere with your performance, but by working opposing muscle groups for every other set, 
you're able to start each set fresh. So not only do staggered sets save you time, but research shows that they may actually help boost your gains and work capacity when compared to straight sets. Specific examples of this were noted in studies where performing rows before chest exercises increased power output. Then in another study, performing rows after bench press improved performance on both exercises. So definitely try to incorporate some staggered sets into your workouts. When you're selecting what exercises to combine together, just make sure that the movements don't interfere with each other. For example, don't combine an overhead press with a bench press because both work the front delts, which would impair performance on both. Good examples of exercises to combine include bent over rows and bench press, pull-ups and overhead press, bicep curls and tricep extensions, and leg extensions combined with leg curls. Another hack that might sound kind of funny, but it is backed by evidence, is avoiding sexual activity the day before a leg workout. This comes from researchers that looked at whether abstaining from sex could improve lower body strength performance. In this study, the men were instructed to do five sets of five squats with as much weight as they could handle the day after having sex, and that was compared to the day without sex. And the results showed that when abstinent, the men could on average squat a 2% heavier weight load than they could on the day after having sex. So if you have a heavy squat workout coming up or some weightlifting competition and you wanna perform at your best, then abstaining from sex the day before your event might give you a small edge. Finally, last but not least, a great tip to boost leg strength is to use knee sleeves during squats. In a recent study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, researchers looked at whether knee sleeves could improve squat performance. The participants performed squats on three separate occasions, wearing either a normal knee sleeve, a tight knee sleeve, or no knee sleeve at all. And the results showed that both the tight and the normal sleeves improved the weight load that they could lift for squats by about 10 pounds. This increase in performance might be because the sleeves enhance comfort, feelings of stability, and proprioception. So you can use knee sleeves during some of your leg workouts to help maximize the weight load you can lift, but I don't recommend using them for every one of your workouts or even for every leg exercise because when you overuse the sleeves, the muscles around your knee that are responsible for stabilization can get weaker, increasing the chances of an injury when you're not wearing the sleeves. So only use this hack occasionally when you're really trying to push yourself with your squat strength. So those are some of my favorite muscle building tips and hacks that most people don't really talk about. I recommend that you try a couple of these in your routine so that you can see the benefits. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more just like this, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. And